Sheikha Moza is often called the most elegant woman in the world and the actual ruler of Qatar. She is incredibly rich, influential in the Middle East and a style icon. However, there is a cruel truth behind the beautiful glamorous face. Why is the star of the East, Sheikha Moza, severely criticized in the West? And why is there is so much pain behind her luxurious life? Keep watching to find out! Sheikha Moza is the first lady of Qatar. Her husband, Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, was the ruler of Qatar from 1985 until 2013. Since then, the country has been ruled by Moza's middle son, Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani. However, gossip says that the country de facto is ruled by Sheikha Moza, who has concentrated all power in the region in her hands. This Arab lady is called not only one of the most influential, but also one of the most elegant women in the world. She loves fashion and wears exquisite outfits from world designers. Unlike many other Arab women who wear a black abaya and remain in the shadow of their husbands, Sheikha Moza leads an active social life. She performs on significant global platforms and attends many events with her husband. She also wears bright, unusual outfits, emphasizing her thin waist and showing off expensive jewelry. Instead of a hijab, the Sheikha usually wears an elegant turban. Each of her publications becomes a whole event in the fashion world. For some people, Sheikha Moza is a role model, the personification of the new woman in the Arab world, who actively appears in public and changes the world. However, the Sheikha is also severely criticized and called the stylish face of the ultra-conservative regime. After all, the situation of most women in Qatar remains difficult. They cannot take a step without their guardian's permission. Against this background, the bright figure of Sheikha Moza in the eyes of Western countries is highly controversial. So, who is Sheikha Moza really? An influential woman who has concentrated all power in the country or just a puppet in the hands of other men in her family who wants to make Qatar more attractive to Western partners? Moza bint Nasser al misned was born in the Qatari town of al Khor in 1959. Her father was a prominent businessman and politician who was arrested for criticizing the government. He had to spend several years in prison, and after his release, the whole family had to flee the country and live in exile in Kuwait and Egypt. Moza received a good education, she dreamed of becoming a doctor, but graduated from Qatar University, where she earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in Sociology. After that, she earned a Master's in Public Policy in Islam from Hamad bin Khalifa University. She also received several doctoral degrees, including from American universities. Sheikha didn't interrupt her studies even after marriage. When she was 18, she became the wife of a member of the royal family of Qatar, Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani. Was it a love match? Hardly. Most likely it was just a bargain for both families, especially for the Moza family. Just imagine, today the fortune of the royal family of Qatar is about $335 billion. The Thani family invests in several properties worldwide, including London's Shard Skyscraper, Olympic Village, Harrods Department Store and New York's Empire State Building. The royals also hold investments in British Airways and Volkswagen. The fortune of Sheikha Moza alone is estimated at $15 billion. She would never regret it even if it was not a marriage of love. After all, thanks to this relationship she became incredibly rich and influential. However, during the marriage the Sheikha had to put up with one not very pleasant fact. She had to come to terms with the position of the second wife and share her husband with another woman. Sheikh Hamad first married a few years before he met Moza. His first wife was his first cousin Sheikha Mariam, the daughter of his paternal uncle. 
You might think that Hamad didn't love his first wife and only married her out of convenience. Therefore, he decided to marry a second time for love. Who knows? However, the fact that the first wife gave birth to eight children to the sheikh suggests that this marriage was quite successful. For what reason he had to marry a second time is unknown, perhaps to show his authority or to leave as many offspring as possible. By the way, Sheikh Amoza gave birth to seven children in this marriage, five sons and two daughters. Hammond became the father of 15 children. However, despite the position of the second wife, Moza was able to get a special place in the heart of her husband. While his first wife remained in the shadow and didn't leave the palace, Moza took up an active social life and became a co-founder and chairperson of the Qatar Foundation. Sheikha received the unspoken title of First Lady of Qatar. She accompanied her husband at all events and became a real star, while no one even knew what Hamad's first wife looked like. The influence of Sheikha Moza began to overgrow. Perhaps it was thanks to the support of his wife that Hamad carried out a bloodless coup in Qatar in 1995 and removed his father from the post of emir. He gained immense power and made Qatar the most prosperous country in the world through natural gas production. In the early 90s, Sheikh Amuza appeared frequently on television and was a prominent figure. First, she dealt with education and science issues and attended world conferences. A bright, intelligent Arab woman in fashionable outfits created the image of a modern country for Qatar in the eyes of Western partners. From the outside, it seemed that Qatar could become a more liberal country where women would soon receive more rights and freedom. Freedoms. However, no one guessed what was happening in the Moza family and what position she occupied in her own marriage. At that moment when Moza gave birth to seven children and began to devote herself to the affairs of public life, Hammond decided to marry for the third time. His new wife was Sheikh Nora, again his first cousin, the daughter of his paternal uncle, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Thani, who was the interior minister. Why the no longer young emir of Qatar, who had two wives and 15 children, needed to marry a third time, no one knows. Gossip believes that in this way he decided to indicate her place to Sheikh Amoza, who had become too influential and demonstrate his power. How do Arab women feel when they share their husbands with two other wives? Are they jealous or take it easy? We can only guess what pain the Sheikha experiences when her husband goes for his young wife, leaving her alone. However, she never shows her true feelings. Moza and her husband look like a very happy and tender couple in public. In the Western world, this is difficult to understand. For this reason, Sheikh Amoza is often sharply criticized, because it's so hypocritical. In public, the Sheikh defends the rights of women and children and tries to appear independent and self-confident, but in reality she is only one of three wives of her autocratic husband. Unfortunately, the situation of many women in Qatar remains difficult. According to Human Rights Watch, Qatar still has a discriminatory guardianship system against women. Men make all critical decisions in women's lives. Qatari ladies cannot study, marry, work in many government positions or travel abroad without the permission of a male guardian. If a woman leaves the house or refuses intimacy with her husband without a legitimate reason, she will be considered a disobedient, while a man, according to Qatari laws, can simultaneously marry four women without asking anyone for permission, even his wife. Therefore, many women are still in a highly vulnerable position. Even Sheikh Amoza, who is considered one of the most influential in the world, could not object to her husband when he decided to marry for the third time. By the way, the third marriage of Sheikh Hamad was perhaps the most successful in his life. His wife bore him nine children, four sons and five daughters. However, she does not go public and remains unknown to everyone. At the same time, Sheikh Amoza accompanies her husband at almost all significant events. 
In the Western world, Sheikha Moza is often criticized for her unwillingness to fight the apparent oppression of women. The First Lady of Qatar often has to defend her country's culture with soft, intricate language. Islam has always guaranteed the full rights of women, she said at a 2006 Carnegie Mellon University address, and women have always occupied a central role in Islamic civilizations. It is important to remember that these women were consulted in forming a legislative order in Islamic societies, and they heavily influenced policies that were to govern social, political, economic and military issues. Not surprisingly, many see Sheikha Moza as just the glamorous face of Qatar's repressive regime. She is doing her job well, demonstrating to the Western world that Arab woman is becoming more free and active in social life. However, the Sheikha is only one of the few women who enjoy such freedom. As she constantly travels the world, other women ask permission from their guardians to travel abroad. While the Sheikha is wearing odd couture outfits, other women in Qatar most often wear a black abaya and don't have the opportunity to show off their tiny waist like her. In any case, even though Sheikha Moza is a hostage in the patriarchal culture, her influence in the country is really very significant. Many suspect that it is thanks to her manipulation since 2013 that her second son, Tamim bin Hamad al Thani, has been the Emir of Qatar. At the same time, her first son, Sheikh Jassim, was originally to become the Emir, but for unknown reasons he renounced the throne in favor of his brother. According to rumors, Moza chose her second son as Emir, as she could control him more effectively. At the same time, initially, the oldest son of Sheikh Hamad from his first wife, Sheikh Michal, was to become the crown prince of Qatar. However, he was deposed by the oldest son of Sheikh Moza. It is not surprising if the first lady contributed to this. Having acquired great power and put her middle son at the head of the state, Moza can devote herself entirely to her favorite pastime – fashion. Her unique style is also quite controversial. Many world designers consider her a remarkable phenomenon in the fashion world. British designer Julian MacDonald declared that not since JKR has any first lady had such global resonance in terms of fashion. One member of the IBDL committee referred to her as the Babe Paley of the Middle East. Another characterized her peerless style as her royal opulence meets Hitchcock heroine. Sheikha Moza has often been among the most stylish celebrities and royals. Indeed, her style is unique, as it combines oriental modesty and western chic. The First Lady of Qatar stated that she does not have a stylist, because she wouldn't find anyone who understands what she wants. She added, it's my mental treat. When I am exhausted, I go to my dressing room and go through my closets, and I try to mix things and fix things. Sheikha Moza loves such popular luxury brands as Chanel, Dior, Armani and Jean-Paul Gaultier. Often she peeps ideas for her outfits on the world's catwalks and then orders similar attires but asks to make it more closed. For example, sew on long sleeves or hide a plunging neckline. It turns out quite unusual, however many people consider her outfits too extravagant and pretentious. For example, Sheikha Moza wears fur coats and boots made of python, while worldwide more and more people are striving to save the environment and take care care of animals. People have also noticed that a 64 years old Sheikha Moza has a too smooth face, which suggests that she's probably undergoing plastic surgery and cosmetic procedures. She looks too unnatural, for which she is also criticized. After all, more and more women worldwide reject ageism and choose natural aging. As you can see, the figure of Sheikha Moza is somewhat controversial. For some, she is a power-hungry manipulator of weak men. For others, she is just the glamorous face of a repressive regime. For some, she is de facto ruler of Qatar, while for others, she is just a puppet in the hands of her husband, whom she is forced to share with two other women. 
For some, she is a phenomenon in the fashion world. For others, she is just a pretentious lady who does not know how to spend her money. I think she is just a woman with her own weaknesses and strengths. And who is she for you? Thanks for watching. Remember to share your thoughts with me. Click like and subscribe. See you next time.